We all love our coffee, but there are a lot of myths surrounding coffee. So what are the facts and what's the fiction? Let's dive right in. Number one, coffee stunts your growth. Now this is a personal favorite of mine because my mom always kept me from drinking coffee growing up. We're a big basketball family and obviously reaching your full potential is really important. But the truth is I got robbed. Well, in theory, caffeine does reduce the absorption of calcium, which would inhibit potentially bone growth in an adolescent. However, if you actually look at the amount of calcium that isn't absorbed, it's so tiny that you could literally offset that just by drinking an extra tablespoon or two of milk. Number two, coffee dehydrates you. Now this is a fun one to talk about because it was taken as absolute fact for so many years, but in reality, it's just not true. Now, coffee, caffeine itself, does have a mild diuretic effect, but it's super small. And in order to become dehydrated by drinking coffee, you would actually have to pee out more volume than you drink in that cup of coffee. So for example, to illustrate how funny this is, imagine you drink a cup of coffee, and then imagine you pee out one and a half cups. That's just not what happens. And then to make this more laughable, understand that people do build up a tolerance to caffeine. So over time, it'll have even less of a diuretic effect. And finally, understand that coffee is mostly water, like 99% water. So studies have shown that it's almost as hydrating as just water itself. And number three, more coffee is better. Now I know from personal experience that this is absolutely not true because I used to have an ex-boyfriend yeah, that's you if you're watching this, who would take caffeine pills before every track meet in college. And then he always ended up super sick, leaving in an ambulance. Never did make that connection. But what was going on is that the caffeine was building up to toxic levels, right? So there is a happy medium. There is a law of diminishing returns when it comes to caffeine. You don't just want to overdose and go like crazy. Now that might leave some people asking, well, how much is going to maximize performance? Well, it's gonna be about three to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And what does that mean in human terms? If you're 150 pounds, that's gonna be somewhere between like 200 to 400 milligrams, which is somewhere between two and a half to five cups of standard home brewed coffee. And four, everybody responds the same to coffee. Now we know from experience that this is just not true. Maybe you're that person who's bouncing off the walls after just a half cup of coffee, or maybe you're that person who can drink venti's all day long at Starbucks and hardly even feel phased. In fact, it turns out how you respond to caffeine is controlled largely by your genes. People have an enzyme that determines how quickly they metabolize caffeine. Some people metabolize caffeine super slowly, meaning that it stays in their bloodstream for longer and that's gonna affect them more. So these are the people that should only have a few swigs of coffee, right? And definitely not drink coffee late at night. That's me. And then there's fast metabolizers. And fast metabolizers can get away with almost murder. They can drink all kinds of coffee and it hardly affects them. And that's because that caffeine clears the bloodstream so fast. Finally, there's another gene that even affects how your brain is affected by caffeine. So there's a lot of variance here between people. Five, coffee cures hangovers. No, it would be nice if this was true, but unfortunately it just isn't. In fact, the caffeine in coffee can actually make hangovers worse because it constricts blood vessels, which isn't good for headaches. Now, the one thing you might see as a positive with caffeine and coffee in general is that it does increase alertness. So if you're dragging after a night out drinking, it'll definitely serve as a pick-me-up. And six, coffee causes tooth decay. How often have you heard that from your dentist? Well, it's true that coffee is acidic, and that's not great for your teeth, but it's only slightly acidic, so it won't have that much of an effect. But the biggest problem with drinking coffee is potentially adding boatloads of sugar and creamer to it and drinking it all throughout the day, because that's really gonna affect your teeth. Now on a side note, what's ironic is that coffee actually contains antimicrobial compounds that combat the growth of bacteria on your teeth. So it's actually helpful. And number seven, coffee will help you lose weight. Now, there is a little bit of truth to this because caffeine is thermogenic, meaning that it's going to increase the number of calories you burn. But does that mean that this is gonna have a substantial effect on weight loss? No. When you actually look at the amount of extra calories you burn, it's very small. 
Researchers took a group of women and divided them into the lean and obese to see how coffee would affect their metabolic rate. They had the women drink five cups of coffee in a 24-hour period. And it turns out that the lean women burned 174 extra calories, whereas the obese women burned about 98 extra calories. So there was quite a bit of difference between those two. But the take home here is that it's not as substantial as it sounds, because when you look at the actual amount of caffeine that was in that coffee, it's crazy high. So for an average 130 pound woman, they would be drinking 1.2 grams of caffeine in their coffee to get that effect. That is a ton of coffee. That's like 14 cups of your standard home-brewed coffee in just one day. And that's so that you can eat an extra cookie. Not the best trade-off, really. So if you really want to lose weight, a better tactic would just be to control your calorie intake and to increase the number of calories you burn through exercise. So those are the coffee facts and fiction.